Dave Semmel. I'm a director working out of Hollywood. Uh, I do a lot of one-hour dramas, pilots, uh, often executive producers as well. I thought there was a bright light, like an explosion. It wiped out the whole city. I've done shows like Heroes and Person of Interest and Legends and Madam Secretary. And most recently, I have two shows coming up, one for CBS called Code Black and one for Amazon uh, called Man in the High Castle. He knows everything but the truth. First rule of undercover. Make the lie as close as possible to the truth. I think that the broadcast really still is rooted in really where its name came from, that it's a, that it's, 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 it's uh, sending out to a very broad audience and, and seeking to net a large audience. And as a result, I think the content tends to want to be a little bit more inclusive. Um, and I think one way of doing that, rather than, or at least what I've found and, and um, in some of the work that I've done, like Heroes or whatnot, I remember at the time we set out very specifically in casting that show to appeal to as wide an audience as possible. And whereas that may have been possible in years past, either trying to get a big lead or someone that may speak to everyone, I think it's a much more fragmented audience now. And as a result, I think there's a little bit more um, obligation on the part of the storyteller to tell large canvas stories that are comprised of a number of different characters, some of whom may appeal to different audience members. So for example, when we were doing Heroes, we very intentionally tried to cast with as diverse an audience and create characters that could be identifiable and recognizable to as much of a worldwide audience as possible. Um, it is really still the, the purview of the broadcast networks and the desire of the broadcast networks to be as attractive to as large an audience and as diverse an audience and more and more over the years as international an audience as possible. I think some of the other networks, the, the pay cable uh, networks, and even more so in the really exciting um, world of streaming, I've had the good fortune of working for Netflix and Amazon now, I think they're looking for content that is so remarkable and so unique uh, and really undeniable that it would justify why someone would have to pay for that particular service. Um, I've, I've had the good fortune of doing The Man in the High Castle for Amazon. It was a great experience. I'm doing something else for them coming up. And it's very clear that their intention in everything we talk about, from content to how we're going to produce it to how we're going to cast it, they want something to not just be a good show that could be talked about in the company of a number of decent shows, whether it's on their network or others. They want content that is so remarkable, an audience will have to seek it out on their network. On one hand, it's, it creates a certain type of responsibility, but on another hand, it's incredibly exciting if you're up to the challenge that the person you're making your particular story for wants you to be unique, bold, exciting, never been seen before. So I'm, there's sort of a very fortunate nexus I find myself at this point where I spend part of my year making a pilot for CBS. I have a, I have a, I have a deal with CBS where I get to make a, a big, fat, network, U.S. broadcast show. Um, and then the rest of the year, I spend my time, whether it's with Amazon or others, trying to make the show that actually is, is, is almost very intentionally the opposite of what the CBS expectation is. The CBS expectation is give the audience something they've seen time and time again, hopefully dressed up in a different way. Tell the same story, but tell it maybe in a way that hadn't been told before as opposed to some of these new networks which are literally looking for you to break the mold and do something that's never been done before. When my father told me what it was like before the war, he said every man was free. America. I want my country back. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the Axis powers of America. First experience I had so far with Amazon was that we were working with Ridley Scott was producing, and it was on a novel by Philip K. Dick. There were such auspices uh, behind the project that I think led Amazon to behave in the way they did, which was to give us a tremendous amount of autonomy. They had such conf confidence between the producer and the, and the, and the, 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 the novel that the project was based on. Um, but I think that's, for right now, and I hope it stays this way, I think that's their M.O. One nation, under rule. Divided, with liberty and justice for none. You know, what happens a lot of time with these new startup networks, we'll call them, it's always their first order of business is to encourage the creative community to come make content for their network. And as a nascent network, they don't have a track record to, um, to sell to the creative community. What they do have is the promise of lack of intrusion. And um, I think it's always, it's always very well intentioned, but after a while their success starts to create a certain type of, I think, anxiety on the part of the, uh, of the network that they have to start imposing their will a little bit to try to make the new content match in some way the successes that they'd already had. They don't have any successes that, that they can refer to. So they're very reliant on the creative community to tell them what it is they should be putting on their network. And I hope it stays that way because it was a fantastic experience. That's not to say that they weren't involved at all. They, they operated in the way that a great executive can, which is as, um, I always like to say it's a little bit like the, the, the lanes on a, on a uh, bowling alley or the bumpers on a pool table. They, they keep you shepherded and going in the right direction. Uh, so Amazon was a fantastic experience. I'm here because I want to do the right thing. Take this. What is this? A way out. I'm very fortunate right now because I get a play in these two worlds, one that has been around for a long time and has experienced its own brand of change, and one that is brand new. And for me, just the ability to go back and forth is very enjoyable. They're, they're, both models have pros and cons to them. So I try to celebrate the pros of whatever I happen to be in at the moment. Um, it's interesting. I had just done The Man in the High Castle for Amazon, and I went back to CBS to do a new show called Code Black which I'm very proud of. Um, and I remember the first big meeting with the network, and it, and it had been about a year since I did Madam Secretary for them, and I'd come from the, the Man in the High Castle, which was basically me, David Zucker, who's the president of, uh, of uh, Scott Free Television, Frank Spotnitz, who created the show, and Morgan Wandel, who is the head of uh, drama at Amazon. The four of us were on the phone pretty much every day. We happened to be at four corners of the globe, but it was basically the four of us making the show. I walked into the first meeting for Code Black, and I think it's every executive I've ever seen in my life was sitting at this conference table, all of whom were allegedly involved in making the show. And so that can be a little bit intimidating, a little bit daunting, but the reality is twofold. One, within that group, having done it as much as I've had, I know the key people who really are the decision makers and the people that you really have to interact with. And the other thing, and this is, I think, kind of specific to CBS, they know who they are, and they're very successful at it. And I found with them that if you play in their sandbox and you color within their lines and you don't throw sand out of the sandbox and you don't throw sand at the other kids in the sandbox, with me, they've been very, uh, I don't want to say hands off, but they've been very supportive and... Uh, they really allowed us to do, particularly in this last show, Code Black, and frankly, for that matter, Madam Secretary as well. Uh, they allowed us to do what we set out to do. I think part of it is, in both cases, the scripts were spectacular. And I think 
um, a combination of I think everybody knew what they wanted it to be, and for me, I've come to realize that that type of autonomy comes from being able to communicate to everybody twofold. This is what I'm going to do, and on a certain level, don't worry, I got this one covered. And if you can convey that sense of confidence to them, they pretty much let you do your thing. We are officially in code black. It's going to take an hour to replace that vessel, and he didn't have an hour. You're not going to transfuse him? Well, you're just going to kill him? We're going to kill him to save him. People come here for one reason only. To get one last miracle. The content is being influenced by uh, the way it's being distributed. You know, um, in the case of streaming, I think, I know for myself as a viewer, the habits that I've, that have changed in the way I consume the material is pretty profound. You know, being able to decide when I watch something and how much of it that I watch, it's way more like reading a book. So if I'm lying in bed and I watch an episode of something and I say, you know what, I think I'm going to watch another episode before I go to bed, I have the ability to do that. It's much like reading a great book. I think I'll read another chapter before I go to bed. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and what that's done, it's freed the storyteller from the obligation of sort of restating the narrative, you know, in... in uh, in a typical broadcast show, you're always kind of conscious about the fact that you're trying to reward the consistent viewer, and at the same time, you're trying to attract new viewers. So you have to straddle this line of not talking above the people who are coming into the show for the first time, but also not pandering to the people who already know your narrative. When you're working in a streaming capacity, that obligation, that bifurcated obligation is completely gone. In other words, if you're watching episode five of a show, it's because you've watched one, two, three, and four. Um, and as a result, you don't have to restate that narrative. And I think the uh, buyers are recognizing that and as a result are much more um, open and actually eager to take on content and material that's a little bit more challenging to an audience and frankly a little bit more literary. Um, so that's been really fantastic. On the broadcast side, um, I think there's some, they're, they're making, they're aware of what's happening in the other formats or the other side of the medium, and they're trying to emulate it, but at the same time, you can't really leave completely, because they're not, you can't leave completely the type of content that they're making to join this new type of content, because they're still delivering it in the old fashioned way. Um, I think their appetites are bigger for levels of production. I think some of the arenas that they're willing to go into, um, you know, obviously there's this huge wave of politically based dramas. Uh, Madam Secretary, um, on a certain level, falls into that category. Um, but, and on a certain level, you know, they're trying different things. CBS is doing these um, shorter run uh, summer series that, um, that, I would say the trend in, network television is just scale, that they're, they're, they're trying to um, create product that is uh, attractive to viewers both in scale and frankly, uh, I think CBS has always done this, but they're looking to uh, cast in such a way with a level of star that um, will attract viewers. I think, I think they're very conscious about how their shows are marketed as it relates to um, the stars, frankly. I recruited you for the CIA. I trained you as an analyst. I know how you think. You don't just think outside the box. You don't even know there is a box. I want you to step in. Step into what? Secretary of State. <laughs> You're joking. I realize you'll need some time to discuss this with your family. I'll give you the rest of the day. It's going to be very interesting to see what continues, what, what, how the, the broadcast model evolves. I don't think it's going away anytime soon, it's definitely evolving. Um, whether or not they hold on to a model that encourages them to continue to make the kind of program they've always made, that's what I think still remains to be seen. If the changes in their business model ultimately start to affect the content that they make, um, I don't see that happening anytime in the foreseeable future.